Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop on this fine eventide. I was about to say winter, but it just feels cold as frick. It ain't actually winter. So we're going over these uh, whirly gig, what flings off the detritus, the schmoo off uh, the lens so we can see what's going on in the CNC uh, machine and also outside in the rain at, at some point. So uh, some of you, we're going to castigate some of the commenters down in the doobly-doo for uh, leaving stupid comments. Remember, folks. There are no stupid questions, only stupid people. Okay, Rain-X. First off, I hate the Jesus stuff. It's essentially silicone. It's a, a liquid silicone. You put it on your, you smear it on your windshield. And then when it's raining hard, it helps. But when it's, when it's just uh, spitting, when it's trying to rain, it gets all smeary. The wife loves that shit on her. I can't handle it. I cannot handle it. The other thing is... Well, John Grismo, okay, he's a knife maker in Ontario, uh, fantastic, high-quality knives. He's got all kinds of fancy CNC machines. Some of his viewers suggested down in a doobly-doo, why don't you just rain X the thing? Here's the thing. Anytime anybody suggests anything at all, you can go ahead and be prescient and say, it ain't going to work. Because 99% of the time, it ain't going to work. If it did work, they would already be doing it. And the reason they're not doing it is because it doesn't work. But the problem is nobody tells you what doesn't fucking work. So here I'm going to tell you what doesn't fucking work. And rain is not going to work on the inside of your... You got to go through the steps, right? If someone tells you, you got to find the right path. So you got to go through the 99 paths to find the right path that lead the treasure trail, what leads you to the treasure and that is why I don't shave my chest and also that is why I like to show you why it's not going to work okay the rain x is not going to work because dihydrogen monoxide colloquially gnomed as water is a polar molecule that is it's like a magnet it has a north and a south pole now because it has a north and a south pole it has very high surface tension it doesn't want to wet stuff when you're soldering and you try and solder bare metal, what happens? It forms a dingle ball. The molten metal doesn't want to wet the substrate because the substrate has oxides on it. You need to take the oxides off with flux. You burn off those or you eat off those or you reduce those oxides. And now all of a sudden the solder wets nicely. Okay, so that is what's happening with the glass. The water actually doesn't want to interact with the glass because it has very high surface tension, but maybe there's some dirt or there's some schmoo on there and then the water wets the glass and it sticks on there like glue. Starting off with a high surface tension water, it it's polar. It will not mix with oils, hydrocarbons or any kind of non-polar uh, compound. We add an ester to that. That's the coolant that you pour in. That is sl only very slightly polar. That allows the water to, to interact with hydrocarbons. And it also reduces the surface tension of the water. That reduction in surface tension helps it to carry away heat better and also helps it to lubricate a lot better because it gets into the nooks and crannies if you want to clean your your filthy jeans off you can't just use water you have to add a compound in there soap in order to reduce the surface tension to allow the water to actually wet things and be able to bring them into solution so that you can get rid of them now when you have water and you have ester you add in heat and me metallic ions metallic hydroxides you get soap. So essentially, that coolant is very, very close to soap. And soap has no trouble at all, or very little trouble at all, interacting with nonpolar molecules, such as the silicon carney in the rain -X. So what I'm telling you is it ain't going to work. And if it does work, it'll only work but for half a beer. And then you'll be reapplying the Jesus rain -X. This is, it's a fantastic business to be in because once you get that schmoo on there, you got to keep reapplying. Otherwise, you got to, it, it just doesn't work. So, so that application of the rain -X on the window for specifically for machining, it ain't going to work. The idea from the previous video was to use centrifugal force, whatever, there's pedants everywhere, centripetal, centrifugal, 
orange is tomato. It's all the same to me. So what we're doing is we're spinning this. And some guys in the film industry got back to me and said, listen, this already exists. There's uh, patents on it and stuff. It's been around forever. So I went and looked and there's a manufacturer here. Here, here it is. Uh, <laughs> patent pending. And it cost just a, a mere $11,000. So quite beyond the scope. The beauty of uh, the patent system is that it doesn't, it doesn't prevent you from copying a patent directly. And that's why trade secrets generally are not in patents because once it's patented, it's in the public domain and anyone can use it to further their own, uh, to further their own research. Another question was, why the Jesus are you using an acrylic bearing that's your hand machine, yada, yada, yada? You can just buy an off-the-shelf bearing fair point well a good bearing this size would probably be 60 60 bucks easy however when you look at the application we don't need a good bearing and it's antithetical to me to go and buy a cheap bearing uh if you want to look it's quite telling double boost does a he does some cheapo bearings and checks them out they're not even hardened the, you know run outs of tens of thousands of inches and they're the only thing they got going for them is that they are cheap a link in the doobly do here so i didn't want to go with a cheap bearing because i have that mental inertia of never buying cheap bearings you always buy good bearings so they last a long time that's the the basis of industry that's a lego brick of industry you gotta you gotta have a, a strong foundation you got to build your machines on a strong foundation and that foundation is good bearings but these bearings are under no load there's no load whatsoever so in this application i think we can get away with using cheap bearings however i don't have any cheap bearings here and from the usual scumbags that take forever so in the interim i went through the old uh, tickle trunk and found a bearing pulled the seals out here's a nice big bearing okay so I've been prototyping this on, here's the other idea. You want to keep it super simple, super simple. So what is simpler than having no bearing at all and just having an air bearing? So I went and got this from the Slamazon. This, of course, is a UV filter, 52 millimeters for cameras. And then there's a, uh, a gland and uh, a nut on there, nut in the gland. My intention was to have an air bearing nice close fit tolerances just blast in air have this spinema thing okay so the beauty of the cnc is it allows you to iterate very very quickly because once you build up your model you can make small changes hit the green go button and it just spits out parts all day long so here's here's the first one and i thought what i would do is just blast in air a nice tight tolerance fit in here and it spun freely, but I couldn't get it reliable. It wouldn't spin all the time, and it didn't feel reliable enough. So that was the first iteration. Second iteration. So in here, I added more ribs to give her just a touch more pleasure. Still didn't work. You get a tiny chunk of schmoo in there, and that's all she wrote. So here I tried a spiral path, a real thin in order to make it easy to machine. That way you don't need a bearing. You need but two parts, just the lens and the housing. Kinda sorta, it kinda sorta half-ass worked, but then if there was any amount, you know, any kind of schmoo got in there and she sees up right stiff. So I decided to go away from this, pounding my head against the wall in favor of a bearing. So here's the first one. A little bit loose on the outside and then I right, her like so and here's the second one again all I did was a couple little changes move this hole over hit the green go button spat out apart I mean the Jesus thing it, it's like magic nice and tight in the bore I got rid of all the grease and that is not dollar store off-brand scotch tape it's machinist helper because the uh the inner bore and the outer bore, or the inner race and the outer race of the bearing are ground flat. So you actually need to have this recessed a tiny bit in order to let it run free. And yes, it 
it doesn't hurt to have a little extra shimmage on the periphery. Tippy tip tip. How's that look? A little off gap. How about the other way? I'm gonna do it the other way. Oh yeah, buddy, like a glove. Allowances must be made for a modicum of bumblefuckery. I glued some schmoo to the lens there, but I think she's properly affixed and we'll give her a wee go. We got our fancy dancy whiskey tango dolly, or in this case, whiskey tango dolly shots happening. Let's give her a hoot. So I won't know until we see the footage, but I don't think I was spinning or it wasn't spinning fast enough. So I got to get that my my hole, my bore is a little off, but I, I left it open. So fortuitously, we can just come in at any angulation and give her a proper blasting. Now that was a rousing success. I don't actually know if that was a rousing success, but it sure looked like it. it flinging that schmoo off real good. Well, now what we got to do is make this into a STL, a print, a 3D printable. You make this out of plastic. You can machine it if you want to be fancy with a, a commercially available bearing, cheap and fast in a hurry from the usual scumbags, as well as this $7 UV lens. You stick it up there and then guys can print their own. Of course, this needs to be different uh, so it sticks on there better and, and all that. And then if you want to, also we could stick up a machinable version, a little more skookum stout for in the machine because the coolant also, it degrades these cases like nobody's business. And the cases, of course, are just acrylic. So the lenses get terrible. That's all well and goodly. You got access to hair, but a lot of us don't have access to very much hair. So what we're going to do also make a battery powered one, electric motor. I think what we're going to do is O-ring friction drive. So we'll just have a, a motor shaft driving on the periphery of the bearing or, or something like that. And the friction being uh, the, the drive friction being enabled by just adding an O-ring and some, some tightness there should drive that just fine on a battery very simple you know don't need to download the app nothing like that just flick a switch and she goes type deal once i get that figured out we'll put that up on the uh, thingiverse or the uh, pirate bay or whatever you know it all depends all depends right somebody what's got the patent for this it might think that uh they need their share of the rake thanks for watching keep your deck in advice